Hello, everyone. It's our <laughs> monthly EAC Zoom call. We're going to call to order. All right. Um, did everyone get a chance to look at the min meeting minutes from March? Yes. Yes. I'm assuming there were no revisions. No, they're good. No, I have, I have, we have no issues. So. All right. Anyone want to make a motion to approve? I'll make the motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes from uh, March uh, 10th, 2021. And I'll second. Perfect. All right. All in favor? Yay. Aye. 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 All right. I will get them out tomorrow. Okay. That's fine. Let me get the stream going here today. All right, um, tree planting for 2021. Uh, just so everybody knows, I met with Shady, not Shady Brook. Um, I met with someone from Feeney's and with Greg a week and a half ago on site to look at the rest of Patterson Farm. Um, Feeney's can't get quotes until August, which is still plenty of time to be able to plant. Um, and then in the meantime, I need to get in touch with some other nurseries to look at what we can supplement also. Um, I looked at the area along Mirror Lake and it's huge. And I don't think it's going to happen this year. It's just way too much to think about right now. And when it does happen, it's probably going to happen in sections of lengthwise sections. It's, it's just a really big area. Um, so Greg told me that we're going to try and set something up in a couple of weeks to go out there and take measurements and get an idea of what that, what all of that planting is going to involve. But right. Patterson farm is good to go for October. And like I said, I'm going to try and hopefully by like late August, early September, I'll have a list of plants that we're going to have for that. Yeah. Oh, so when you're right. saying the, the mirror lake area is very large, how many trees do you think roughly would that mean? Well, we're going to need, we're probably going to need at least 300, 350 to finish Patterson. We're probably going to need triple that. Oh, well, it's you're big. talking all the way to the road from the street? Well, all the way to wherever the right of way ends. Because, yeah, I mean, to do a buffer, if you just narrowed it some, because there, there are trees on the other side away from the road, but it's more the road side of the stream that might need some and maybe just pick out a few areas that really are don't have much of a tree buffer well on the that road full side. length doesn't have a tree buffer pretty much mm -hmm. not not a good mm -hmm. one it might be like one one layer of trees barely mm -hmm. all right just trying to yeah no i i i looked at it when i was out there it's mm -hmm. it's just a lot um and i i need to like honestly sit there and wrap my head around it before yeah. we get started on that one the Linda, false you, plant. Go ahead. When you go out with Greg, can you? I'd like to try to go. I don't know that I'll be able to, but I'd like to try okay. to. Go. So if you could, you know, I'll copy everybody when I when I send an email to Greg. Um, I'm trying to get some stuff for work. It's probably not going to be till like mid to late May at this point because of work. So I'll I'll copy everybody when I send the email to him, and then um, mm -hmm. whoever wants to join can join. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, uh, Linda. Uh, we're going to be around probably till at least the end of June. So uh, as long as I have an open schedule that day, I'd love to go as well. Okay. Yeah, I was out there a couple of days ago and the falls, last fall's plantings look really good. They, they look good. The um, yeah, yeah the only thing, so unfortunately, I think almost every, if not 90% of the button bushes yeah. were completely devoured. I, I was so that. upset. Yeah. Um, they're and the it's only just, ones. they're the only ones, nothing yeah. else. Everything else did really well. I had to like, when I was out there, I had to like make a few a little deeper, They or at least build them up a little bit. Um, but the button bush is just, they, the deer had it, had it with them. They, I don't know what it is with that tree, that shrub. Bush, yeah. Um, yeah, we well, might. Lesson I learned in the future. And button bush, okay. Yeah, either that or, or plant bigger ones. Um, they they were just too accessible for them. Um, when I was talking to the gentleman from Feeney's, we were talking about doing getting rid of them 
during the fall planting and putting some other more hardy, less or more deer resistant shrubs in the place of those. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that was that lesson learned exactly. No more button bush. It's a shame because they're beautiful when they grow up, but mm -hmm. you have to get them to that point. I think they'll live. They've just been cut, browsed back. Uh, I couldn't find any viable buds. <laughs> I guess I'm an optimist. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there were a few, but there weren't a lot. It was a shame. I mean, I'll yeah. keep checking, but I don't okay. know. I didn't. I couldn't find anything that looked viable. Can, so, can we go ahead? Oh, but so then that whole Patterson is done. I'm going to put it to you, Suzanne, to talk about your update. <laughs> yeah. So a few things, and Alan, I think maybe you could help me explain some of it uh, better. Sure because I know you uh, had a chance to speak with Jim because I was also asking Jim the same question. So um, mm -hmm. there are, you guys have asked me in the past about who owes trees, what developers owe trees. Um, yes. And I'm gonna say no one, that's obviously not 100% accurate, <laughs> but it's well, mostly accurate. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Alan, because I, well, I think you might sound more credible on this. Yeah, Jim Majewski sent me an email yesterday that gave me a rundown on every project and where the replacement trees were at. And they're all pretty good right now. Um, Caddis planted additional 70 trees in their buffer behind the building there, which was good. Um, DiLorenzo's planted seven trees at the dog park and 19 more at Veteran Square. Bright Farms planted 25 trees at Veterans Square. And that one outstanding development is Flowers Field. And they're still trying to figure out where to plant theirs. But it's only been, what, six or seven years since they were approved. So, <laughs> but at least it's moving. I'm really happy. It's moving. And, I, and I think that brings up, you know, let, let's, let's talk about trees and some of the things we've talked about over the... Um, past few months and, and when I was with you guys in the, in the past. Uh -huh. um, I think it's fabulous, as you know. I love the tree planting that you guys do. You know, it makes me choke up every time I, I talk about it. But I think your point is well taken that there are some plantings that the township can take on as well and should be taking on. It's just hard right now, right? You know, we lost two members of, um, Parks and Rec, um, that they passed away in the fall. And we have hired or, or found the replacement candidates, but you know we're not up to full speed yet. Um, so what I was hoping and what I've been talking to Linda about a number of years ago, that dreaded firm did put together some ideas about tree planting um, around the township. And I think we mm -hmm. could pick one or two or maybe even three of them off um, with the help of the staff or professionals in the fall. And yeah. I think that would be a good thing. And once we get through that, we can also talk about what we can do or have done for 2022. Um, I, th I, think there, I think we can continue to do more. And so I, I hope that that makes everybody happy. Alan looks happy. You look very happy, Alan. Oh, I'm just very happy. <laughs> oh, well, that's, uh, that's actually very good news, uh, Suzanne. Uh, we actually worked with that other firm uh, in the creation of that plan. And you know, regardless of what's going on now with lawsuits or anything else, uh, that's somewhat immaterial as far as this is concerned. I think the overall plan was quite good. And basically what we've been doing is kind of chipping away at that plan but if you think that something more major can be done in the fall, you're certainly going to have our support. Yeah, and, and Jim, not to try to be too cute, right? But like it's gone past lawsuits, it's in indictments, right? <laughs> there, right. There's cr right. criminal activity found at that firm. Um, the township has received money, which we've had to pass back along to the people who were impacted and we're in the process of doing that. So it's, but let's not throw the baby out with the bath. Let's see what you we can it. do. Um, and Linda's been, as she always is, a tremendous help in trying to spec out what some of the rough estimates would cost so we can, we can do that as effectively as possible. Good. That being yeah. said, yeah. 
Uh oh. <laughs> I would like to talk to you about changing our native plant ordinance. Uh-oh. And I would like you to consider, and we could talk about it and you could reject it or you could approve it or think about it, going from 100% to 80%. I'm flexible. But what is the purpose behind that? Sumya, to be quite honest, to bring in some pretty trees. To bring in some, not, you know, I'm not talking about full blown, like I don't want you to plant burning bush or full, full on invasives, but some opportunity. I mean, you drive around the townships, we have beautiful magnolias that wouldn't be allowed now, right? We, we have a very limited selection of plants under the ordinance. So I understand the purpose of the native um, target and I, appreciate it and support it, but I'm just hoping that there's some room for some flexibility. Yeah, but I think that the purpose is most uh, important, right? Why we have an ordinance or why we want to modify it. If the purpose is to have pretty trees, can we um, identify pretty native uh, species and add that on? Well, there, I, I assume that those that had been identified are the full list. And maybe that was a no. bad assumption of, on my part. Maybe I there think, is. I think that only stands as a, uh, those only stand at ex- as examples. But um, uh, I'm sure a, a native tree ordinance would allow any other native tree, even if it's pretty. So I mean, magnolias <laughs> too. Yeah. How do we? Yeah. How, yeah. So, so then help me. Maybe maybe we yeah. have a solution already, right? Because yeah. I went through the the list of trees that are identified. Uh huh. And I don't, I don't want to shame any tree, right? The trees are all, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> there are some that are, you know, um, and none of them are like the, the magnolias that, you know, as my mother would call them, the wild magnolias, you know, because she was not a horticulturist, but like the ones that, you know, the show are just coming to an end now, they are not on that list. Are they native? Could we get them to that list and therefore we'd be able to plant them? Because I think people think that list is it. Well, the list and was, is the list, but is the uh, list just is, native to Bucks County or is the list native to PA? Because there's some, I was having some issues with what was considered invasive and somebody said that they're, they're invasive, they're not native to Bucks County, which is why they're on the invasive list or on the non-planting list, whatever the list, whatever, but. Well, um, I was principal author of the native plant ordinance. The period, the uh, area covered is actually the Delaware Valley area. It's not precise because when you're dealing with plants, you can't come up with that degree of precision. But the list of trees uh, that you can choose from is incredibly comprehensive. And there's many, many beautiful flowering trees in that list. Uh, For instance, some people say, well, why can't we have more of the pears? They're absolutely beautiful. The prior uh, uh, traffic, I mean, the prior uh, township manager was was literally in favor of getting rid of all those pear trees because as beautiful as they are, they tend to be invasive and they're splitting uh, year after year after year. So it's, firstly, I think as far as aesthetics are concerned, uh, I don't think you can find, uh, personally find a more comprehensive list of dead drop beautiful trees than we have in the list. Uh, and secondly, the main feature of the ordinance is the environmental benefits associated to natives. Uh, and that's a whole study in itself. And that's not something that be, can be discussed in five minutes. The ordinance is been in effect since 2007, and initially people were going to uh, were saying, "Oh, we're going to have issues with that." We have not had one major issue with a developer over the last 13 years since uh, that uh, ordinance has been, uh, you know, in uh, in effect. The only difference that we not difference, but modification was made in the uh, memorial garden, and. I'm not even sure for the whole, what the rationale was behind that, but 
the people who set up that garden had you know, lost dear ones uh, in the 9-11 catastrophe. And they had made this request to the township to slightly modify the ordinance. And at the time, quite frankly, no one was going to say no to that. And they're isolated in the garden. And I don't think it's been a, a real major issue, but we've just had some trees that are dying there that have to be replaced. And I'm not sure if they were all native or not, but what they're doing is the replacements are all going to be native. So, uh, you know, up front, I mean, I'm always willing to talk about things, but up front, uh, I'm not really in favor of modifying the ordinance. This uh, ordinance has been uh, a, uh, a boon, not only to us, but we've had uh, referrals all over the United States, especially when this first went in. Uh, this has helped put Lower Makefield Township on the map as an environmental par powerhouse, quite frankly. So, so James, is the list exhaustive? Yeah, is and we also have cultivars because this is Sorry? meant to be a rehabilitation project. Rehabilitation projects always use the straight species. And uh, we thought that that would be somewhat restrictive because generally the cultivars uh, exhibit the same values as the straight species. And it gives you a lot more flexibility. For instance, in red maples, you have probably 25 or 30 cultivars, some of which are quite frankly, some of the most beautiful trees in the world. People come from all over uh, to our country to actually purchase these trees and uh, plant them overseas. And there's several magnolias on the list. There's many, many uh, flowering trees. I don't have the list in front of me. But do, do you, Suzanne, do you know the tree you're interested in? Maybe we could check it out and see if it's, you know, more or less native. Because magnolia is like warm weather and it's getting warmer and warmer <laughs> here. I, I mean, I'm happy to put together a list of some trees and then you got, you guys can we give can look at them. your feedback, you know. Yeah. And again, like, you know, I can't help you know, in where I grew up, most of our parks were very um, prescriptive, you know, Central Park, we, like as we all know, and I, I had the good fortune of being up there last week. I mean, it is in purposely and intentionally planted, would not pass muster with today's native ordinance. No, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. suggesting it should, but wouldn't, but I'm, I'm more used to stuff like that so, you know, it could be that we're not very far apart. Um, I do know that when the ordinance was suggested um, and talked about, Jim, there was some movement by people to not have it 100%. Um, and I, I think you're talking about the Bartlett pear tree, which I think, if I understand, like it's, people hate it, right? Because Bradford, it's the developers. Yeah. Bradford, 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 yeah, Bradford, because thank it, you. They, uh, the, the fruits end up making a complete mess. Right, and it's a developer's dream because it grows fast, but then it'd be like three Absolutely. or four, right. So I, I'm not, that's not, I don't want to bring back that type of situation. That, that's definitely, and I was thinking if we were going to move forward, we might want to include a list of some things that are no-goes, right? These are the trees that we find, you know, but that's what I, I'd like to talk about going forward. So I am happy, Alan, to put together a list of some trees, send it to you guys, and you guys could say, or how about this, or yeah. okay, or, or whatever. Yeah, that sounds good. Going. Yeah, I think so, the agency has always been flexible, Suzanne. And if you send us those lists, uh, possibly there's a native equivalent that would uh, suit the purpose. But again, it, the main purpose of this ordinance is environmental in scope. And I have a suggestion. There's a book written by Doug Tallamy called Bringing Nature Home. Uh, he is a professor at the University of Delaware. He has spoken at our lecture series uh, several years ago. He is literally the guru of the native plant movement. In this book, he explains the worth and value of native plants and why they should be used in our landscape 
in a very non-technical way. And uh, I think you would really find it good re uh, reading rather than uh, us getting into right now a lengthy dissertation. No, I, uh, I mean, I didn't say, I did not suggest, nor would I ever su suggest getting rid of the ordinance. I think it's a valuable and an important tool. What I asked you to think about, you know, what we're, uh, you know, we'll move forward with thinking about is, is there some room for modification? The answer may be no. Yeah, I agree with Jim. I think uh, I no, agree with Jim. The answer may be yes, too. It, it all depends. But uh, why don't you send us the list, Suzanne? We'll uh, certainly review the list. But uh, if that suggestion about Doug Tallamy's book is a really, really good one. He's literally become the guru of the native plant uh, movement. It's easy reading. And I think it's a real eye opener, Suzanne. I'm going to make a joke about you suggesting I need books that are easy to read, but. <laughs> 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 it's, not that. It it's just that a lot of plant, forward. Right, a lot of plant, yeah, a lot of plant <laughs> books uh, tend to be uh, written quite frankly for botanists. Exactly. Okay, yeah, I have a tough time with. Those, yeah, so. I, uh, I have a few points. First is I think I completely agree with Jim, the, uh, and the ecological benefits are something that we should not compromise. Uh, and I would say it would be a hundred percent compliance is what we should go for. But as uh, um, as I think Alan uh, suge or uh, Jim suggested, with whatever plants that you like, if they are in the no go list, uh, it should we should be able to suggest alternatives which are native, which are equally pretty and uh, things. Because the list can be maybe expanded or whatever. But if it's a no go, it should be a no go. So given this, uh, the, given this joke on easy reading, uh, I was going to suggest that uh, Jim should, I think, do a, since, since Suzanne has a simple question, uh, why do I care about natives? So maybe that could be a next lecture that Jim could do. Make it simple, make a difficult book simple for <laughs> uh, an average person. I love native plants. I love them. I'm just wondering if there's room for some compromise. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank uh, you. Just, just, carrying, yeah. just, be, just taking off on uh, this conversation and just suggesting if Jim could do a lecture on that, that would be very valuable to a lot of people who vaguely know about native and what a bother. Oh, native, how nice, but I don't really know anything about it. So it's at a very basic level, it would be a good educational thing to uh, do. Uh, so that's up to Jim if he wants to take that offer. Um, uh, that's a good possibility. Maybe uh, this fall, uh, when things start opening up, I'm not a real proponent of virtual lectures. I've attended them, and they're okay. They're certainly better than nothing. But uh, I've been lecturing on native plants for the Master Gardener Network for uh, almost 15 or 20 years now. So I would be glad to uh, you know, spend some time with that uh, later in the year. Yeah, whenever uh, you feel right. And there were a couple of other things I wanted to uh, ask, um, whether it's something that is worth considering. Uh, one is, uh, Alan, you have a list of uh, uh, replacement trees promised uh, or uh, executed, implemented uh, from Jim Majewski, right? Yeah, I just got it yesterday. Yeah. Is, it, uh, is that information something that uh, we can put on the EAC website? I think that would be useful for people to know. Is that something that would be allowed? Well, I'm sure it'd be allowed. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, under our uh, uh, tree ordinance button or something that sort of shows uh, how, the, uh, how the tree ordinance has in effect, uh, you know, it's a sort of status report on that. Been used. Um, yeah, I guess we could put together something. So is that okay, mm -hmm. uh, Suzanne? Is it something that the township will be okay with? Of course, but okay. I, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know that people would uh, uh, totally get it though, right? Like if, yeah. if, you, if you say like DiLorenzo planted 15 trees and veg I don't, but I, of course, feel See, free to share yeah. Want. yeah, once information is there, uh, people can uh, start asking questions and understanding. But I think it's something uh, which is use interesting information for the public. Oh, so developers can't get away with cutting trees. I never knew that, you know, that sort of stuff. A simple thing. And the other thing is uh, regarding more tree planting in the township. Uh, so in the last meeting, while you were not here, Suzanne, 
uh, we were just discussing whether we could do something, some sort of an incentive program to encourage um, private landowners to plant trees and be able to use the tree bank money uh, to subsidize some of those plantings. And we would, of course, uh, insist on natives. Uh, and some suggestions were uh, along the riparian buffers. We have streams going behind people's backyards, uh, street trees. And can't be done. Can't be done. Can't because be done. I mean, I, I'll continue to look at it, but I, I have been looking at this for a while. Would that be one of the solutions to the tree bank money? Could we have like a day where we buy a hundred native species, whatever, and offer them to people. And so far, I'm totally being told legally that it's not how it can work. Really? So the money, you know, is for public mm -hmm. benefit. Um, I'll continue to try to see if there's ways we can solution that, but that's right. That oh. the whole point is that the public has lost. And so the public will be made whole. So that means uh -huh. planting on, you know, township, space yeah. not private property yeah the ordinance doesn't state either public or private but if it's the concept you're talking about of correct public money yeah yeah i agree totally with the uh with what you're uh, talking about suzanne because legally this thing was a little loose when we put it in the tree bank ordinance by uh taking trees from a uh, a, a specific development and putting them somewhere else so the whole intent of it was not to have the public uh, involved as far as uh, obtaining any of these trees, but uh, completely on uh, public land. Yeah, and um, you know, the I don't want to misstate anything. It's not like I'm a lawyer or anything, but um, <laughs> the that the ordinance is still being challenged, right? So we had a, a favorable reuse ruling recently um, based on the dogwood, the proposed dogwood development, and that ruling is now being appealed. So, you know. Really? I, I didn't know that. Wow. So Ed Murphy. Yeah. In action. Yeah. I hope the uh, appeal is an answered positively because quite frankly, from an environmental viewpoint, this is one of the best things that happened in our township in the last several years. And, uh, and we're making hay uh, on it right now and hopefully we'll continue to do so. Is okay. hay native? <laughs> I, yes, actually there are certain varieties that are, okay. <laughs> native hay. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what court is it in now? What appellate court? So I-, I, I The state? It literally, like they just filed two weeks ago, Alan. Okay, so. for the appeal. Mm -hmm. All right, well, at least we won the first round. So, uh, and all these trees before the money disappears then, right? Yeah. Well, the, the money we have, you know, we'll, we'll get moving on it. So outside of the tree bank money, is, are there any ways to create incentives for private landowners? I, I know that other townships do this, they do buy, uh, subsidize plants and distribute them. That does happen. It has happened. Uh, we just really, very recently, I was just coming across some distribution. I forget the township. Um, but uh, townships do do that. So is there any way, if you say tree bank money cannot be used, but is there something else uh, that can be used to uh, subsidize or create incentives or create incentives in some other fashion? I, I wouldn't say at this point in time, Sonia, that there's uh... You know, and I can't speak for the other supervisors, and I certainly can't speak for every resident in the township, but generally speaking, um, you know, what we hear from residents is we, we need relief from the costs of living in Lower Makefield. So our budget is very tight right now. So I can't imagine that there's a way to do that, but, and it, and, you know, I, I guess we could, Sometimes some of the questions that come to me as a supervisor, I, I literally like go back to like, you know, a public planning class in college or something. And I wonder how this would be solved in a truly academic setting, right? Um, of all the things we have to work on as a township, and there's quite a lot of them, is encouraging, subsidizing people to plant a tree, you know, a, one of the top priorities. I, I don't know. 
right? I mean, they could all get the, the free Arbor Day tree from Pico, right? That, that's something. Well, this is something I think we could uh, consider doing down the road. Upper Makefield Township right now does uh, give their residents uh, some subsidy. It's like 25 or $50 if they plant a tree. And I think what happens is that people take the receipt up to the township and they, uh, they give them money. So this is something that we might want to consider down the road. Are we done with trees? Okay. No. <laughs> oh, never. <laughs> we'll go back to the button bush. Okay. Yeah. Damn button bush. <laughs> All right. Done with number two. Um, number three. Uh, Jim did a very good job in getting us trees procured for the arboretum. There was a PO sent a couple days ago, last week. Yeah. Right. And all my emails have come together. Um, and they're going to be planted in fall, right? We can't hear you, Linda. Sorry. The, the arboretum trees, the true replacement trees, are going to be planted in the fall? No. They're, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, the others are going to be planted in the uh, spring. Uh, what I did is I talked to Monica and uh, I also talked to Fernwood. And I acted as the uh, middle person in arranging uh, that tree planting. And those two trees are going to be planted later in the fall, uh, probably at the end of September. Uh, I told Monica that uh, Fernwood needed a purchase order in order to put these trees aside. Uh, she has issued the pur a purchase order. And as far as I, and she sent me a, uh, a copy. So as far as I know, that uh, portion of the memorial planting uh, is in good shape right now and it'll be done in the fall. There was an additional planting too. Uh, what actually happened when uh, uh, Ellen Saracini, who is uh, I think of head of one of the Memorial Garden uh, committees, uh, she got in touch with me and wanted to know if since the Memorial Garden needed 19 replacement trees, if we could uh, hop onto the order for the two replacement trees and I talked to her against that saying that would be confusing because she's talking about trees that uh, they need planted uh, in the springtime before the 20th year anniversary of 9-11. So again, I coordinated with her and the people in Fernwood and it was a pretty comprehensive list, but then eventually I was able to uh, get out of the uh, loop after I had uh, linked these two people together and as far as I know right now, according to Ellen, uh, that is moving smoothly and hopefully that will be done this springtime. Um, all right, well, those are all set. Thank you for your work on that one. Um, land use, Ellen, we have two. And then I guess, Ellen, are you gonna bring up the email I sent you from Jim Majewski also or not? The lot line change? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you about that. Sure. Okay, land use. We got no new preliminary or final plans this last month, but a preliminary and final plan was approved at the April 7th Board of Supervisor meeting, and that's Picket Preserve. So it passed, and uh, the tree replacement fee is still in place, and we're going to get a a boatload of money from that. It's 200,000 plus, which will bring the tree bank uh, money up to like 300,000. So like you were saying, Suzanne, we need to spend this money. You know the best time to plant a tree. I'm sure you've heard this. Do you know? Any day? 20 years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we might as well get started. Before it gets too much longer. So there's every there's, every year that I'm with you guys, we plant trees. So yeah, we plant trees. that's good. That's, we got three hundred thousand. We can plant a lot of trees with that. So yeah, hopefully in the fall we'll get going on that. So it's approved, and um, there's a lot line change that Linda mentioned. It's the Miller lot. It's across from CVS in Edgewood Village. 
I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's across the street there. And I think uh, Mr. Miller, I forget his first name, but he wants to, um, I guess he combined two lots and eventually he's going to want to put a house there, but no plans for a house yet. He's just changing the lot land. So I, I don't see us commenting on that. Yeah, it didn't look like there were any natural resource issues. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's trees there. I mean, there's a wood line. Yeah, there's a wood line that eventually, but there's, yeah, there's no. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, Jim Majewski said he was thinking about planting it on the other side of his house near the creek there that feeds into um, Buck Creek that we want to plant trees along when it gets to uh, Patterson Farm. But he discouraged him because you'd have the buffer to deal with you know, resource protected land. So he moved it to the other side. All right, um, at the planning commission meeting on April 5th, two sketch plans were presented to the planning commission to see what they thought of them. And these are just rough ideas of what the developers want. One is the Trorillo, the point, it's at Edgewood Village where Langhorn Road, Langhorn Yardley Road hits Edgewood. It's kind of a obtuse triangle, I don't know. It's, an unusual piece of land. And there's two houses there, two existing houses that have been going through demolition by neglect for the last 20 years. And he says he'll fix those up. One will be a nice, he thought an ice cream store and the other would be apartments. And also on that property, he'll add two more buildings with a total of, I think 14 apartment units. So I guess there'd be 18 total in that little piece of land in the triangle. So there were traffic concerns. So we'll see what happens with that. The planning commission had traffic concerns. And the other one was Bucks County Smiles, who's my dentist. And they wanna build a dental office at Dobry Road and Oxford Valley Road, in the corner there near Caddis. And there's a house there now, and they would tear down the house and put up this 8,000 square foot office. And they wanted 54 parking spots, but I think they're gonna eventually ask for less. And there are some natural resource land issues or resource protected land issues, but they, you know, they aren't committed to anything yet, but we may see a variance, a zoning variance for buffer distance and woodlands and things like that. It's unclear right now. And last, uh, the zoning board is going to hear the uh, deck property uh, variance request that it's at Woodland Drive and Schoolhouse Lane near the Braze. And that one I think is May 16th. It's not for a while, but they also have some resource um, natural resource protected land issues, but the developer's trying to work around them. I guess, I think he's got the, where the house would be, it, it's, it's dividing a piece of property and in the subdivision, they want to build a new house in the empty parcel. And so there was strong stream buffer and floodplain issues. And they, they've gotten rid of the floodplain issue, Jim said, but there's still a stream buffer possibility problem. So we'll see what happens with that. And the Timco property at, um, on Edgewood, just down the street from the um, township building, nothing's been proposed for that, but Jim Majewski said they were inquiring about a sewer hiccup, <laughs> hiccup hookup if uh, a house was built there. So there's a little bit of action on that, but nothing significant. And that's your land development report. And so there'll be no comments coming out this month unless something new comes out because there's nothing to comment on. <laughs> okay. Well, actually that's good news. Yeah, I guess, yeah. We've had enough development for a while. <laughs> so Alan, when you talk about the Timco property, yeah. um, it was purchased. Oh, that, that's right, yeah. So it was yeah. on the market and some private person purchased it. So I, if you say there has been no movement, I agree with you. I wouldn't have access to like real-time information like that, but yeah. we can assume since someone purchased it. Oh, it, it's gonna happen, yeah. Which is too bad. That's such a nice piece of property. It's so visible too when you drive by. So 
we'll keep our fingers crossed. Maybe there'll be a housing crash and they'll be able to build the house. We'll see. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We all have houses. So that's it. Thank you. Um, recycle the styrofoam recycling event is all set for May 15th. Um, I guess what else needs to be done for that at this point? Linda, we're having trouble hearing you. Bill? Do we, do um, we have the updated flyer with the May 15th date, Linda, for the styrofoam? Uh, uh, Alan had sent something the other day. I sent it out. Did you get it? I thought I sent it to you, Suzanne. I didn't. I can send it to you. Alan, I responded uh, regarding the pill bottles. The pill uh, thing, yeah. I want to talk about that for a second. I mean, it's a good idea. There, there are two types of bottles, right, Sumia? There are... I'm going to jump prepared. off real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. There are prepared bottles, and there are unprepared bottles. Correct? Yeah. Okay. And... I mean, I was looking at my, what they define as unprepared bottles, and those are all recyclable here. I mean, my Advil bottle had a two on it, and the prescription yeah, yeah. ones had a five on it. So yeah. they could be recycled here, but the prepared ones, that, that's a good idea because they go to the poorer countries in Central America and South America. So it's just a matter, you said your daughter would clean them? She offered to do it. Um, okay. But uh, no, the, the, that's what I was trying to find out from our research. Yeah, and they wouldn't respond to you. Yeah. They, they just don't respond. Even Terra Cycle didn't respond, uh, yeah. which is a private I mean, company which uh, with a mm -hmm. resident uh, uh, owner. But uh, the number five uh, is recyclable. But what I had been reading, the reason why I picked it up, I mean, why I thought it was worth investigating is that uh, when they sort out the recyclables, the size of smaller um, plastics goes through some sort of sieve, like whatever they pick out. Mm -hmm. So the plastic is recyclable, but the process is such that these fall through the recycling um, size and they do not get recycled and then they go to the landfill. That's the information which got me excited about this whole thing. So, oh, actually it does not, even though the plastic mm -hmm. quality is recyclable. Does waste management do that? I was. There... I've knocked on their doors. I've yeah, knocked you tried on to Republic. find out. But right. uh, well, uh, in one chain, they sent me from one place to another, and they kept. In, in, they sent me to uh, uh, the picking up place, the trash place, but they nobody could help me basically. From mm -hmm. one yeah, it's frustrating. And um, so I wanted to find out if that is what I had heard, or I mean, sort of read is correct mm -hmm. for our uh, waste haulers. So the not just medicine, not just medicine bottles, but anything smaller in size than their sorting mm -hmm. device get, gets does not get recycled. All right, we could collect the prescription bottles, but there's a place where you might be able to get a lot more, and it's sooner. Bucks County Medication Disposal Program on April 24th. What they're they're going to collect these you know, unused, unneeded medicines at 47 sites in the county. And one of them is our police department at LMT. So oh, what if, why don't you contact them and see if you can have the bottles once they, I'm sure they get the bottles, they dump out the pills and then they throw the bottles in the trash. Oh, okay. Why don't, cause you'll get a lot more from that than if we try to collect it, I have a feeling. Okay. So our police department, and what is the program called? It's called Bucks County Medication Disposal Program. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on the 24th. 24th May? No, 24th? Of April, yeah. Oh, I mean, sort of April. Okay. Yeah, so that seems like a, would be a gold mine. <laughs> you can always drop off unused prescriptions at the police department. That's just something mm -hmm. that they do because especially oh. when it involves certain types of medications, it's really important to get them out of your house when you don't need them. But as yeah. you pointed out, Alan, there's a, a concerted advertised effort 
uh, for the 24th to get everybody as part of their spring mm -hmm. cleaning to do it. So I think that would be a great idea, Sumya, to reach out to them for a yeah. and, um, Is that what they do? They throw the medication and then they throw the bottles? Or like, what do they I do? Don't, I don't know what they do. That's what I'm assuming because that just seems like the way things work. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can ask and see. If, uh, yeah, if find out. Yeah. yeah. Any particular person I should talk to? I think if you call the non-emergency number, they'll have someone that can, yeah. can direct you to or they'll get back to you. Okay, yeah. great. I never knew this. It was announced at the start of the Board of Supervisors meeting last week. <laughs> in community announcements. Oh, yeah. Suzanne, can you announce the styrofoam and cork collection? Done already. You have? Once you pointed out that I didn't see your email, I fixed oh. that. <laughs> okay, great. So are you going to add the pill bottles for our collection or you, you don't want to do that right now? Well, why don't you find out if you can get them from the police department? Because that, that seems a lot easier and you'll get a lot more too. <laughs> Okay. And if, thought, if you yeah, can't, I mean, yeah, no, I thought that is for uh, the ones that they're going to, the uh, that would be the collection where people are dropping off unwanted medicines, but uh, right, they just like me have a lot of off. empty yeah. uh, medicine bottles with you know, with uh, where I have used up the prescription. Oh, the use, yeah, the ongoing, like I keep generating so many empty pill bottles that go into the trash. Mm -hmm. So that's like a different category. Well, let me know what you find out, and if. You want to add it to the flyer, I can always type that in for the 15th. Who's going to be around to help on the 15th? Uh, we are. Okay. Gene and I uh, will certainly be available. Okay. And I'm 80% sure I'll be there. So I can, might... I can probably show up at the last hour. My daughter has a lacrosse game from 9 to 11. Okay. It's right at Bain, so it's not that far away. I'll tell you, we might end up, Alan, I think with two, two, um, we need 500 corks for corks. us, right? Yeah. Everybody drink, we, drink the wine. Huh? Yeah. And we all have to have a box full from two, <laughs> from two or three people. So yeah. I'll bet we're going to end up with a couple of boxes of corks. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Alan was over for dinner last night, and him and Gene are really making a significant contribution to this uh, Clark uh, uh, collection. We want to do our part. Yeah, we're, we're very proud of our efforts. <laughs> so there is a community group on uh, for Bucks County recycling and reuse. I can post the flyer there uh, when you want, because lots of people are um, swapping things that they people are discarding, plus announcing events. They're also I think they're holding some event this in April sometime also. All right. Huh. And then, yeah, we're thinking in, in September, we'll have another collection event and we can add things to that too, like batteries and used printer cartridges. Cause th those are easy to recycle. The process is simple, but we can talk about that in summer. I think that battery store over by IHOP takes batteries, mm -hmm. at least they used to. Household? I'll go check. Yeah. yeah. What's okay. it called? Like battery plus or every kind of battery you could ever kind of want? Wow. Okay. It's a battery store? Yep. Huh. All right. Okay. My list. I think well, let me, um, let me just talk about... Uh, the parking recycling in the parks for a second uh you know nicole raftery one of our residents was was working on this and um she's only she's working fairly slowly so i started thinking that um and i wonder what you all think about this instead of having her do this, which what she was doing was very formal and comprehensive because of what she does for a living. She assesses the, how people are doing with their recycling. So she was doing it. Um, she had mapping and all kinds of stuff. I don't think we need that. Um, I think what 
Monica is looking for is just, uh, she just wants to know how we can make people recycle better in the parks, which I think is education and, and um, bins that show you whether they're, you know, whether they're a trash can or a recycling bin. And we don't have that it really in any of the parks. Um, but anyway, instead of waiting for Nicole to do this very fancy project, what do you all think about using um, like a, a scout troop or something to do the, um, to go to the parks and, and just all they have would have to do is write down how many bins are there and what they're supposed to be for and whether they're, be, they're being used for what they're supposed to be used for. And, um, you know, it's what, five parks or something. What do you think? Well, uh, do, you, do you know a scout troop? <laughs> I, I know scout troops. I know of scout troops. I was I and I will do it myself if we if you don't think it's a good idea to use a scout troop. But I I think that they're always looking. The scouts are always looking for projects, and I think this would be an, maybe a fun and easy one for them. Well, yes, you can find somebody to do it. Great. If not, we'll do it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I wonder, I, I don't know if this is helpful or not, but um, when I w was involved with soccer or lacrosse, um, anytime we have a tournament, we, we coordinate with waste management. We make sure that there are recycle bins everywhere. Um, right. and the Epic tournament, which for years was the largest all-girls soccer tournament here on the East Coast, which happens over Mother's Day weekend, is you know, coming again uh, in early May. So I'm mm -hmm. sure somebody at YMS is looking at this and can tell you from the past what they have for those types. And, and that's a really large event. So maybe too yeah, much. We're, yeah, we're interested in normal use, not the big events now. So. Okay. But yeah. Okay, I don't know if I can but it, Well, it would be a good idea though to somehow put some sort of information on the existing um, bin. whatever, the existing bins that we had out there. Yeah, 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 that wouldn't be hard to do. And it, it's also random. We never, you know, nobody knows what's what and they just throw no. it nearest bin and uh but yes i mean i guess you're right we we could use we could use what's there we would probably need more because in some yeah. of there's just i mean no, it's a good idea to find out what's there how many and that like just get the base information but then from there regardless i think we need to somehow label the existing and new bins because right. people are just going to still put whatever they want into whatever bin is closest to them. If right. they even put it in a bin and they make the bin at that right. point, sometimes it just right. doesn't count. Yes. Okay, well, I'll, um, so what do we think? I mean, I, I'll see if I can find a, a, a scout troop. And if I can't, I'll do it. It wouldn't take much time at all. Okay. Well, you might find the scout troop that uh, was involved in that Christmas light project because they've already uh, have a proven track record and they might be the uh, a good candidate for that. I think that's pack 30, but um, is it? Oh my, so yeah. but, uh, <laughs> you know, all you have to have is kids in the township and you can. Uh, yeah. um, but that being said, one of the problems with the scouts, right, is they tend to run like through May. So I don't, I don't know that they're looking for projects right now. They're probably winding down, getting their badges and getting ready to gear up again. Okay. Not that they're not always willing to help, but yeah. Okay. Well, that's, you know, I'll just, it, it's not gonna take much time at all. And I'm walking red in the parks all the time anyway. Um, so I'll just 
walk in the parks and take notes. The other thing is that uh, if there are any requests for volunteering opportunities, uh, I think Monica would get them. If there are groups which are looking for uh, stuff to do around the township, she would know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you should something contact, right now. I'll check. Contact her. Yeah. And if that happens, Jean, you're gonna have to write up what you want them to do so they know. I am? Yeah, just <laughs> warning you. <laughs> Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, um, lecture series. So we have a tentative lecture series for next week. Yeah, I uh, got <laughs> a call from uh, Monica. So at least she owned up. So uh, she apologized, I accepted. And I believe we have a lecture series with next, uh, this time next week. And I hope that uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, people will come. And Monica has said that she will do the advertising. We'll do whatever we do normally, but uh, in terms mm -hmm. of getting a press uh, e release and uh, whatever the township does. So um, I send the information, I send the uh, news to Heather because uh, Jean had suggested that she's good at making flyers. So she's uh, hopefully she can uh, get this and she can send a write up. Monica needs a 500 or less word write-up about composting and uh, including the information about the event. So uh, she says this is good enough time to get the word out. Uh, I said, I don't know, but uh, that's where it is at. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully more than us will show up. <laughs> now, Sumia, do you think, why can, is it easy for them to schedule it a different time? I mean, there's, why, it, why does it have to be so? Soon. It doesn't have to be, it's just that it was, it happened so. I mean, I've been uh, sending emails from beginning of February. So if the question, Zoom if the question still, Jean is, you know, can we move it? If you guys want to move it, it can, it can be moved. I would be much in favor of moving it. I don't know, know who's, I think you need more than a week to get a word That's out. That's exactly and, what I've, I've been trying to impress on Monica since uh, March. So let's, let's try not to, you know. I've been doing going down that road consistently. Okay, since so March. let's still try not to, right? We, we, we're not in an ideal situation. We could all talk about how exactly we got here, but I don't know where that gets us. If you don't think a week is enough time, and I, I, I can understand why you might not think that, um, then we can move it out. If you want to go forward, we can go forward. We could even probably, you know, go forward and then go forward again, right? Um, one of the things about Zoom is that everything can be recorded. Yeah. So um, the whatever, whenever the presentation is, it will, it can be stay, saved and be on YouTube and mm -hmm. people can watch it afterwards. That's what I was telling her, that we're gonna discuss it in the meeting, but uh, she called and said that she thinks it is uh, more than adequate time. And uh, well, I said, I don't know because I don't market events. She said, I do. So she said that, uh, she's, she, according to her, this was uh, perfectly all right. So all I right. tell her that we'll be discussing if, it. In so meeting. if Heather's looking forward to question and answers, I think that's a question to pose to Heather, then I think that it might be better off to push this off. Yeah. To give it enough time for enough people to be on the call. Now, if all she wants to do is record it, then next week is perfect. No, she well, I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. if, if we know what the weather is going to be, right? Sadly, we've learned uh, that when we have things in really beautiful days, people would rather be outdoors. But if we know that it's not going to be a beautiful day, we probably will get more people who will attend. Right. Uh, Heather, I think Heather's plan is to try to um, get questions from people. So it's not just Heather's plan. It's our plan also. The whole idea is to, uh, you know, get talking yes. about it in the community, not just look at a video recording of uh, why composting is good. All right. Well, do then do we want to do we want to pick another date then? I have already sent Heather. I mean, Monica insisted that this is perfectly all right. She's 
We can pick another date. So if you want to send Heather uh, asking her whatever Monica wanted. So uh, this is we're going to need that information regardless. No, uh, we need a new Zoom link and you don't know how uh, difficult it is to get a Zoom link from the township. I'll take care of it, Sumya. Mm -hmm. So please let's, you know, as I've stated already and I'll state it again, we are very short on people. We are a big township with a very lean staff and Parks and Rec specifically because of the deaths yeah, that they have endured. It was not our suggestion, but April was Parks and Rec suggestion. We did not pick the date also. <laughs> it's like amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know. So, I will so, take care of it. Sumya, you don't have to contact Monica ever again. I will take care of it. But you guys let me know if you, and you don't have to let me know right this second. We can reach out to Heather. We can decide. We can decide the second. We can decide tomorrow. We can decide the day after that. You let me know what you need, and I will make it happen. Okay. To go Did forward. You, like, would you talk to? Would you want to talk to um, Heather? To, uh, maybe she needs to give us some input whether she's, you know, if, if she would prefer to move it. So can message Heather. Hmm. I can message Heather. Yeah. And uh, and then if she says she would like to, which I mean, I don't know if then then we just need to uh, get the date from the township and and if we need a good what three weeks, right? So why do, do we, we would have to check the date with Heather, right? We can't, we can't right now say we're going to go forward next week or here's our alternate date because we need to check Heather's availability, correct? Right. right. Okay. Okie dokie. So I'm going to uh, uh, okay, respond uh, to Heather and... Um, Monica right now saying that um, at the meeting, Suzanne suggested that we move it and you will have hear from her. Suzanne did not suggest that we move it. <laughs> Suzanne <laughs> is perfectly happy, not uh -huh. Susan, but Suzanne to do whatever you guys want. So if you okay, don't, if we, I if mean, we decide I, I that we- already, Yeah, I just, uh, uh, you know- You don't have to contact Monica, Monica soon. You don't have to contact her ever again, even right now. You don't have, don't write no, to her. I, I, I will like take care of things in limbo like this because I've already asked Heather to prepare something very urgently. So I do take responsibility for my actions. So I have to at least uh, do that part, let her know what to expect. But just I to be clear, right? Like that. Huh? We, you guys, you guys are going to decide if you want to go forward next weekend or if you want to move it out to another date. And we're going to reach out to Heather to find out what other dates she might be available to help make that decision. Okay, as of now, officially, uh, Heather has been contacted based on Monica's assurance that we are going ahead with next week. Um, I had told Monica we're going to discuss, discuss in the meeting. She said, oh, next one week is no problem. So that's where we are at. So if you're going to change that, uh, you guys can let me know and I can accordingly inform both of them. Linda, <laughs> your chair. Don't leave this on me. What, I mean, again, I think, I would think that in order to have a good question answer session, I think you're right that one week is not enough time. This is just my opinion. What does everyone else think? And mind you, we don't have Heather's input on this. Right. Yeah, I personally think it should be held three or four weeks from now. I think yeah. we give everybody plenty of time uh, to get their uh, act together. And I think the question and answer in a lecture like this is real, real important. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I, th I think at this point, I mean, it's going yeah, to happen. Yeah. I just think that we should, we should, take Heather's input, see if we can get this moved a few weeks out. Regardless, she has to create a flyer and a write-up for whichever day it's going to be, whether it's a week from today or three weeks from today. Right. She still needs that. Have, we still need that information. So whatever she's doing isn't going to be in vain. Okay. 
And Alan, you're 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 in in agreement, right? To yeah. I mean, you gotta have time to publicize it to get some people watching. Yeah. Okay. And as soon as we, you know, have the new date, I think we could send out a send out the date, right? We could publish, you know, through the email list. Right. And then when the Zoom link comes <coughs> in, we can. We can send that. Yeah. Right. So who's going to coordinate this? Uh, Suzanne, you're going to coordinate this with uh, Monica. I will just send out an email saying that at the meeting, we decided to postpone it. And uh, Suzanne will coordinate with Monica on the date with Heather's inputs. I have I reached out to Heather, and as soon as I hear back, I'll let you all know. Thank you, thank you. Um, good. Okay, that's the lecture series. Um, Sumia, we're back at you still. Uh, every bit counts, I guess. Do we have another? Yeah, potential? We, have, we have a new one coming up on. Uh, uh, home uh, backyard, uh, what is it called? Backyard stream restoration or uh, uh, buffer planting. So I have contacted the person, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Megan uh, uh, Rogales put me in touch with. Uh, yeah. Two, two sec sets of, one is a per private landowner and another is a, a, a homeowners group. So the second per people, they have not contact, responded back, but I am going to meet with the first person who has a planted on his own uh, a riparian buffer on his own property next week, and I'll have one ready out after that. Okay. Good. Uh, can we go back just for a second under lecture series? I'm seeing your potential education tour at Patterson Farm Planning with Penn State Extension. What's that all about? Yeah. We talked okay. about that at one point or another. Um, yeah. At this point, I, I would think that we, that. I think though we should wait until the entire Patterson farm is planted. Oh no, this was different. Uh, this oh, this was, was different. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is something that uh, I had talked about because uh, Kathleen Connolly from from the Penn State Extension reached out to the Master Watershed Stewards. Um, asking whether anybody could organize, uh, was interested in organize events, educational events around certain topics. So the topics that sort of fit with something that we could do was uh, riparian buffer walk and a macro invertebrate study. Oh, that's right. So this is that. And uh, she just got back to me today saying that uh, uh, it can be done in um, any time, summer or fall, although earlier she had said specifically said May. And as far as I know, for a macroinvertebrate study, that is sort of the right time because of the life cycle of mayflies. So she sort of left it loose. And she said that uh, basically we have to prepare a plan and get it approved by Penn State. And uh, according to their COVID protocols, you can have a maximum of 25 people per, I mean, at a gathering. And uh, she said I could get in touch with another master watershed steward uh, volunteer called Lynette Saunders. I don't know if Jim, you know her, uh, to figure out how to go about planning this, you know, basically how to uh, put this together. So uh, if we have, um, I guess we have a location and we have topics. And Linda, I think you said you could do the riparian buffer walk. And uh, we could all pitch in to do the macro invertebrate thing. So um, I thought the date was supposed to be May, but she says it can be any time we want. Um, so we can choose whatever we want. I mean, we don't have to choose now, but we can think about planning an event. And uh, I've already reached out to uh, Lynette uh, to find out how what Penn State uh, expects in terms of planning information and uh, resources and things like that. We obviously have to coordinate with the township and with the farmers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, right now it's at an idea stage. So I have to find out what the planning effort, uh, what is required by Penn State. And um, uh, if we have a timeline, we can work backwards. Like, are we looking, do you think it's something to do uh, very soon, um, fall? I mean, wh whatever, whatever works. No. But uh, if we have a general timeline, then we can um, work backwards. I'm trying to think very soon, probably isn't going to be able to happen. Fall, we'd obviously have to not do it 
when we're doing the planting. And, and then also, with, we can't do a control macroinvertebrate study after the uh, planting. It has to be done before the planting if we want to compare uh, the section uh, without the riparian buffer and the one probably with looking the at September or the maybe the first or second week in October. But does that make sense uh, to do a macroinvertebrate study at the end of the uh, season? So I was a bit surprised by her response because first she specifically, that was maybe two weeks, back, two months back, she had specifically said May. And today's email says it can be any time you guys want. So we can't do a macro invertebrate study unless we find them there, right? Unless we try to gather them during the time they're supposed to be there. I have so while to you chew on that, I've heard from Heather. Oh, oh, as luck would have it, Mm -hmm. The first week of May is National Composting Awareness Week. <laughs> wow. So she proposes May 3rd. Uh, great. I would still give good. plenty of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. So May 3rd, let me make sure that I have that right. Oh, May 3rd, it, the week of May 3rd, the week of May 3rd. Because May, May 3rd itself is a Monday. So I assume that brings us to May 8th. Yeah, see that Mother's Day weekend. It's, I'm good with it, but you know, some people don't like to do anything that whole weekend. So I'm just nobody. I mean, unless Mother's she does it, weekend. unless she just does it one night, like because yeah, on the side, Saturday from, Sunday nobody will turn up on a Mother's Day weekend. They will be busy planting in their own homes. I think even it's Saturday, like Linda is suggesting, is better. Yeah, I'm thinking, I mean, she was going to do this one. It was supposed to be during the week. So I would say do, do it during the week, except don't do it on May 5th because you're not going to get anybody on that one. Well, May 5th is a supervisor meeting. So what's Cinco de Mayo? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're not going to get anybody worthwhile on that day. <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk to Monica and Heather about May 6th, May 7th, and May 8th as an alternate. Um, and we'll see what best works best. I'll get back to you all. Okay. That sounds great. Thanks. All right. I'll look into the macro invertebrate study. Let me talk to a couple of my friends. I, I, I don't know if fall is going to be a good time, but let me, let me pick the brains of some people who do this for a living. I'll be needing a pop-up book on that one. <laughs> so um, uh, the, the approvals <laughs> from the university require at least two weeks. So that is something we have to factor in. Okay. Okay. So ideally, it should be before we do the tree planting because otherwise we lose the control. I mean, there's, should no, be, point, but, there's no point but, in doing two locations then. Yeah, so, I don't think summertime would be a really good time to do it either. I mean, if anything, maybe June. Yeah, well, if you could find out what is... Uh, appropriate given the life cycle of the insects. <laughs> that's that's yeah. how we should go, I guess. All right, I'll, I'll call some people tomorrow. Um, Alan, yes, is please. that a Hilferty kind of thing? What? The life cycle of the invertebrate near the bushes. <laughs> well, they do have streams in Five Mile Woods, so maybe you know some about it. All right, we'll leave, we'll leave yeah. with Linda's friends. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll get some answers. Um, okay, what else? Uh, where are we? Where are we? Uh, environmental Stewardship Award. I guess right. We we have discussed candidates. Oh, I was like, wait, ready I to discuss. I signed it. I mailed it myself. I know, no, no, no. <laughs> discuss candidates for this year. Um, do we want to get into that right now, or do we just want to like hold that one off for a little bit? Well, why don't we hold off a little, uh, because it is a little early in the year, and uh, we just recently had that nice article in Yardley Living, and Heather DePrado really uh, publicized the Environmental Ship Stewardship Award in Lower Makefield, uh, and I think hopefully we're going to get some responses for that. In the past, we've come up with some uh, candidates, the board, I mean, the EAC itself, and then we've also received some uh, you know, from outside, from the, uh, you know, the people of Lower Makefield Township. So uh, I think it's a little early in the year, personally, unless somebody else takes issue with that. 
Do Only you, April, yeah. You ever think about advertising it? Right, because like maybe there are people who... Yes. Okay, so should we start doing that now? Like, because maybe there are people who are doing things and we don't know about or who, who would do something, right? If they had the funding, they would, you know, I don't know, whatever you guys think, I agree with. Could we put it on the Facebook page at LMT? Some little write up? Oh, yeah, we've never done anything like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, right? well, I don't know about Facebook, but we put it on the newsletter in the past, mm -hmm. and it's also appeared on the uh, Lower Makefield TV channel. Yeah, that highly watched TV channel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it from 2 o'clock in the morning, Alan. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> Kevin's back. Shush, Kevin's back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we could get it out there in various places. I mean, if you write up something, Jim, you know, a flyer type thing, we can put it on Lower Makefield is a great place to live, Facebook page. and So like they don't the, love it so much. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't mean to speak for them, but they don't love it so much when township stuff is on that page. They won't really? keep it down, but they don't love it. That's mm -hmm. really what's one of the reasons why the township has been Okay. Really pushing, you know, on the bottom of every agenda, we have the links now to Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, whatever. Right. So feel free to send it to them or put it up there. And, and I hope it stays up there. Um, but let's also utilize. Yeah, the yeah. maybe you should go to the township Facebook page. I'm going to try to get our recycling flyer for May 15th on Lower Makefield. It's a great place to live. So we'll see if they let me do that. Okay. Um, all right, we're at odds and ends. Kevin, you came back just in enough time. Kevin. Yes, I, uh, I have nothing, nothing productive to report. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to report that. Um, there's, I kind of need to go back into my home part now. There's been a lot of developments. Kevin, we're having trouble listening. Uh, hearing you. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Be closer. Um, I wanted to report that I don't have much to report, except that there's been a lot of developments in the last few months, um, so I need to kind of update what I was planning to report, um, and I have a ready for 100 minutes tonight after this meeting, so I'm going to try and make it a focus on next week or so to get some good All right. Were you still going to do that presentation to the supervisors? Yes. So that, do that? Great. Yeah, so I have that draft resolution, but they, um, Fred had wanted a presentation. I think it does make some sense. I don't know if Suzanne can present to the, the board before we present the resolution. So you're going to have to fill me in a little bit because I'm not quite sure what we're talking about. Yes, but I do have an answer to your email. Well, I have some information to your email, but first you fill me in. Okay, yeah, that, that's unrelated. Um, the uh, ready for 100 resolution is the Sierra Club initiative to reduce uh, emissions and reduce fossil fuel usage by a certain deadlines and timelines. Um, so we had, I had prepared a res resolution, but it was decided to make a, before we present the resolution, to do a presentation to the board to get their input. First. That's my yeah. next step is to get that ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy when you're ready, you let me know and we'll get that on the agenda. So, um, if you're done. Uh, Kevin, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things. Yeah, related so you, so you finish and then I'll, I'll. Okay. Yeah. So that, that'll incorporate a few of the other items on the odds and ends. So like the vehicle charging ready for hundreds, they'll be kind of near the line of tail. So Kevin had asked a question, and I'm sure I'm going to mangle it, but basically, like, there's some interest in storing information, I guess. So the quick answer, Kevin, is no, we don't have such a thing. Okay. But I'm not really sure that I understood the question, and so I'll go at it this way. Alan, you probably are the most aware that we did something new with Pricket, right? So we did a lot of new things with Pricket, including putting it before 
the township back in 2018, the minute we heard about it, even though it wasn't ready yet mm -hmm. in a traditional sense. But for the most recent presentations, we created a Google share drive and the public can access everything about. Right, all the submittals. Mm -hmm. So that's about as techno savvy as we are right now, Kevin. Um, and so I guess, the, you know, in terms of the EAC, your minutes are stored, your comments that you send back on any kind of land development, et cetera, are stored. What else is it that we're looking to collect? Because then we get to in like a little bit more of a gray area, right? Because the minute you start storing and collecting everything, it, it brings with it obligations. Um, and I just wanna make sure that what we're looking to store and collect is appropriate kind of stuff. So it may require some you know, more detailed one-on-one -on -one conversations and maybe even bringing in the solicitor and I may be overthinking it and misunderstanding it altogether. So have I gotten close to the mark? Yes, yeah, so it, for, for the rest of the, uh, the EAC, um, I've been communicating briefly with Suzanne and Linda about having like a central place online to organize our documents. So we're not all like fishing around and we can always get access to the most recent version mm -hmm. of documents. Um, and I wasn't sure what the township had already uh, that we could use. Um, or if we could do something on our own, like have a oh, or something mm -hmm. like that. Or if that would even be something that the EAC would want. It's just a, a, a question about doc, document management and access and collaboration. Yeah. Um, I personally just put all the EAC stuff in a library. I have several libraries I have and organize it that way. I don't know what other people do if they would could use this. Because you could use a OneDrive like Jim Majewski does with the land developments. I, I do something similar. I just wasn't sure if there was a tool already that we could utilize. So. The answer is no, that's fine. I was just curious. Yeah, it could probably be done, but do we need to make that effort? That's, is it worth the effort? It's only worth it if we all use it, so. Right. That's kind of why I was testing the waters first before right. I thought it took Hmm. That's all I really have for us. Mm -hmm. Are we done? Yeah, well, done, done with nine. Done with nine? Um, mm -hmm. Who's 10? Uh, discuss upper, uh, the other opportunities. So do I guess, do we have any other opportunities to present information or have we just talked about them in other items which we kind of sort of have yeah well, it'd be nice to have our newsletter again but if paul's not going to participate we got to get the list from him of the email addresses yeah. so if anybody sees paul walking around the street i guess we he doesn't seem to respond to emails at least according to gene so if you're listening to this paul <laughs> send the email list so, you know, Paul, Paul's um, time on the EAC expired last year, um, oh. but he has been reappointed. He requested reappointment and he has been reappointed. So, <laughs> but you're, you're saying he hasn't, he hasn't been able to attend. Is it the earlier meetings that are, does anyone, nobody has? Any we haven't seen him in months, probably four or five months. Yeah. Wasn't he at the recycle day? He was at the recycle day. He was. He was. He was. He was. Yeah. Yeah. In January. Yeah. Was That's it January? Yeah. It wasn't January, was it? Yeah. We, yeah. What's January? January fourth, I think. Time yeah. is flying. Yeah. Know, when you're having fun, oh my god. Yeah. You know how I like styrofoam. Yeah. I hate styrofoam, but I I like it. It's a relationship. So yeah, we haven't seen yeah. him since then. So who's who, 
Alan, why don't you get in touch with them? Well, <laughs> I'll send them an email. I'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. I will. Okay. Because yeah. we do need to, he does need to either give us the list or. That, or starts, yeah. That was one of the my concerns about the, um, you know, about Heather's thing. They're like 500, 400, 450 people who would be, who would love to see Heather's compost thing. And, mm -hmm. and we don't know where the list is, so. This unfortunately brings us back to, should we have an area that we put information that's accessible to everybody? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Huh. Well, I mean, unless it does, it make sense once we get this list to give this list to Monica. <laughs> and I don't know. What would she I mean, do with it? What would she do with it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's on her plate. Uh, the last yeah. thing she needs is uh, another list, or at least, yeah. but at least, or someone else. Once we get the list, someone else has to have it. Like we can't just have one person. We are not right. getting the list. Uh, I think you can forget about it. We're not getting it? Uh, you think we will? I've been on this EAC since uh, four years. I've tried from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. To get the list from Paul? The e list. I mean, email uh, list. Yeah, we'll try. Saying. We'll get it from him eventually. And we have to find somebody who will put out the uh, newsletter. Speaking of which, are there... Did anybody ask to join the AC, Suzanne or Linda? Because some people expressed interest. They didn't. Yeah, there, there were a ton of emails from what I. I don't know. Maybe we did get. I'll double check. Maybe we did yeah. get um, one one letter. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. I'll, I'll look into it, Alan. So they can, they'll be our newsletter person if they join. <laughs> It's, it's looking like May 6th at 7 p.m. All right. Oh, good. May 6th at 7 p.m. That sounds good. Not for me. Is this, I mean, whom did you hear back from, Heather? Heather and Monica. Oh, both. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, Oh, that's better. Um, um, all right. Anything else? Any open discussion topics? I had a quick question for Suzanne. Do you know the status of the Bright Farm buildings that are empty now? Are they going to be taken down? Because the previous leaser was supposed to take them down. <laughs> um, so you say the previous leaser as if that lease has expired. And it has oh, not. it's still, they just left and they're paying rent. Wow. <laughs> so it, you know, okay. It's hard to talk about Bright Farms for me. It's hard to talk about Bright Farms, right? Because I wasn't on the board when it happened. And I know, Alan, you'd love to lump the board all together. Okay. No, you're all special people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, the board that approved that to the yeah. extent that the board approved it. Mm -hmm. um it's it's a long lease and not only is it a long lease I, I, you know it has a few more years on it or you know at least another year and a half it also okay. has um right. options to renew that that sit at the at the hands of the leasee oh really wow yeah okay. so um All right. i didn't know that you still they still have a lease in there <laughs> crazy <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, they had come to us a while ago with the hope that they could expand. And I think I speak for everyone, although I'm not sure that James was on the board when that happened, but, you know, we're, that there was a resounding, yeah, we're not really interested in that, you know. Good. Yeah. I mean, to me, I don't quite understand why we have a greenhouse on farmland. Like we should have a greenhouse on land that can't be farmed. Yeah. Parking lot. <laughs> Uh, you know, whatever. So, you yeah. know, until that lease is up, what can be done with it? 
you know, is limited. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. They have no obligation to clean it up until they say we're not here anymore. So. All right. Where are they? Are they're, they're someplace else, right? So- yeah, no, they're doing... Their business model has grown very successfully from what I understand. Really? Huh. You know, the, the, you know, I remember hearing at one point that hydroponics was going to be the future. Every time there was an E. coli breakout, the hydroponic people were like, yes, you know. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, now that it's really, I won't say it's perfect because nothing's perfect, but they understand the science behind it. It's, it's, it's very efficient. Huh. So. Wow. Wow. Not efficient enough for them at Patterson Farm. So I just had some follow-up questions. So uh, Susan, uh, uh, Monica will do the marketing for the composting presentation and we will do whatever marketing we do normally. Like we don't have the official channels. We just do our posters and uh, Facebook page, whatever, you know, those the community ones, not the official ones. So yeah, I, 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 asked, I asked Heather to prepare the flyer and the summary as you had requested, you know, with the new date. So as soon as we have that, you know, we'll put it on the the way that we've always supported these lectures in the past. Yeah, so, uh, which I don't know, uh, but all we, I know is that uh, apart from the township stuff, Alan used to put posters in a lot of places and I used to put things on uh, Facebook, the non-official uh, mm-hmm spreading of the word. So if you can copy me on your conversation, when she gets the thing out, I can forward it to Alan and I can do my part. As soon as I get something from Heather, I'll, I'll send it to everybody so that you can environmentally safely plaster it everywhere you want. <laughs> All right, I, uh, I have another item too. Uh, I talked to Alan about the update of the CPI index and uh, Alan, uh, came up with a nice analysis that should be very helpful to the board. And he also uh, found info to create the uh, a table for the last several years. So what we would like to do uh, with this is just send this information, you know, to the board uh, via an email and then, uh, you know, let them digest it and then uh, do, uh, do, what, do what they want to do. Uh, uh, now I sent this in out earlier uh, today, and I think uh, everybody's had a chance to look at it. I don't think there's anything real controversial about it. It just, mm-hmm. you know, talks about the history of the CPI. And again, I think this should be very helpful to the board in not uh, updating this amount. So uh, I'm just wondering, uh, I, do we need a, a vote on something like this to send it out, Suzanne, you think, or? Well, when you say you sent it out to everyone, not you, oh, you the, so not not your liaison. Oh no no no! I'm sorry. Uh, you you didn't uh, you didn't receive that. No, but I'll, in the past, I will in the future rather I will see that you get that. Yeah. So in in the, as it's been explained to me, you know, so it doesn't mean that it's true. But as it's been explained to me, theoretically, the board asks the groups for stuff, right? So this is something you guys have come up with, and it sounds like it's something, if I'm following you, CPI, Consumer Price Index, we're talking about raising the value of replacement trees, I'm guessing. Yeah, Um, yeah, sure. Because I don't have the email, I'm trying to piece it together. Um, And it's in the ordinance. You're supposed to do this, you know. Why haven't you? Anyway, so um, I think it would make perfect sense to send that along. And yes, Linda's Mm -hmm. correct that you need a motion and approval to do that. Okay, and I'm sorry for the oversight. Uh, you- hey, and I just sent it, sent it to Susan. Pardon? Yeah, we send everything to Susan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess uh, we need a uh, word on this. Uh, um, I, will thanks, to send it I to- guess, did everyone get a chance to read it? First it's, off. Yes, it's, it's brilliantly written. It is, it's brilliant. <laughs> I see wine stains on it. I think I know where the cork. <laughs> hey, multitasking. <laughs> yeah. so again, that cork project's real, real important. Like I'm saying, so any yeah. any contributions are uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> gladly accepted. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to approve to submit the information to the board of supervisors? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Oh. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. 
in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Susan, I'll send uh, Suzanne. Oh, good. <laughs> it's okay, Joe. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my, Suzanne, I'm working hard at it. Okay? <laughs> Look, I'm going to be. I think Jim is. I think Jim's working on the cork right now. Yeah. <laughs> the cork project right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't even drink, so I can't use that <laughs> excuse. But I know what uh, my excuse is. I'm going to be 80 in June, and I think I'm rapidly approaching senility. <laughs> Will you do for uh, an excuse, Suzanne? Yes, it's all good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh, I uh, love it. All right. Uh, another thing at the end, that Yardley Living article, uh, I'm sure everybody's probably had a chance to see that. I was uh, very, very impressed with the write-up that Heather DePrado did. I thought it really uh, put Lower Makefield Township in a very, very favorable light. And, uh, you know, I would, what, what do the other people think, uh, you know, of that article? It was great. Oh, it was great. It was really yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, no picture of Dara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, but uh, they, uh, everybody was invited, okay? And uh, Suzanne and uh, Sumya, uh, you missed a good opportunity uh, to be what Alan described as the Lower Makefield Township rock band because he said that's what the photo looked like on the front. Like, you, uh, you do look like that. that. That'll be on your first album. He just said that because he wasn't in it. Yeah. Yeah, and he was mad and jealous. Right? No, I got over it. Don't worry. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. No, it's a good article, though. Hopefully, we'll get some volunteers. Hopefully. Yeah. To join, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I wonder because you, Alan, you said you you heard from several people after your article in Oh yeah. Voice and what about where there were at least four or five people, right? That's yes. Exactly. I always copied you on it. Yeah. When yeah, I and, yeah. Well, well, the one person came to the one meeting. Yeah. All right. Oh, and that was it. He, yeah. he said he would volunteer, but he didn't yeah. stop joining. Right. Hmm. But yeah, other than that, then that was all we heard. But no, Alan, Alan responded to each person. Mm -hmm. with, with Told them what to do. On what they needed to do. And well, Suzanne uh, said there might be one person. So, <laughs> well, say Heather, Heather, compost Heather wanted to um, join. Mm -hmm. Well, compost Heather has not sent in a letter. So, compost Heather. <laughs> yeah. Send in a letter. Huh. Maybe she, I don't know, maybe she's disenchanted. No, I think she wants to join. I would just like to point out that I brought Compost Heather to your attention two years ago. You did, yeah. I know that. All the, credit, I yes, all the credit goes to you, and I think you are a good um, customer as well for Compost Heather. So uh, not currently, but yes. Um, and really, the I, I have a friend at Hopkins. She told me about it, that they do it in, in inner city Baltimore. And really? so I started searching for a way, you know, for people who don't want to or compost on their own, how they can oh, still. Yeah. And I found and by that time, Heather had started it, because I believe she just started this two years back. Oh, great. Oh, she did. Well, is it, Suzanne, how come you're not uh, composting now with her? Um, it, it's just logistically it wasn't working. What, you know, a, a lot of silly little reasons, including that I have visions of being my own composter. Ah. Ah. You know, I have a pretty, I mean, compared to you guys, I'm sure my garden is small, but um, I have a pretty big garden and I need more compost. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. I was getting okay. um, but I really I can't tell you how impressed I always was and even even though I don't compost with her at Halloween you know I, I emailed her and I said hey you want any pumpkins and she's like sure bring them over you know so wow. all the pumpkins Actually, went in, I, went saw her, I, went, I went and saw the setup at her house and uh, and I'm going to see her business setup as well soon but she actually does it herself, the physical job. 
Yeah, I am like completely blown by that. Uh, yeah. She is extremely knowledgeable about soil regeneration and uh, the whole thing. The, well, the drawback I see personally is that you need a whole lot of the carbon stuff, which is not possible at a home level. So, which is why I think the presentation is good to get more people in, in, interested in this, this sort of, uh, to help this kind of business. Yeah, I, I'm hoping she gets some more business from all of this uh, that we're doing. Um, yeah. Because she, she deserves it. She's a hard working. She actually, mm -hmm. because nobody uh, makes, I mean, uh, cuts their waste into small bits and stuff, but she actually sit, does the chopping and apart from the turning stuff and everything herself. I, I, <laughs> I had no words for that. Yeah. yeah. Hey. When's um, the next meeting? So the next meeting is not going to be till June. Um, hmm. June. June. Uh, how come? Because Alan was the only person that responded and said we don't need a May meeting. Well, I so said we went to June. It depended on events, or if we had any okay. events coming up. No. So, um, I believe. Don't don't quote me on it. I believe June 9th is the next meeting. It should be. All right. But once I get the Zoom information, I will send it. But everyone has a month of May off, aside from the compost. Styrofoam. Well, nope, compost first, compost no. seminar or webinar, and then styrofoam. Mm -hmm. And wine corks. And wine corks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't forget that. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, Alan, uh, can you send me that uh, information on the tree bank um, money situation? I can forward it to get it put on the website, ESE website. You mean the email that Jim Majewski sent me? Is that is there some kind of a document that well, can be uploaded? Well, he kind of puts it to, at the end. You could copy and paste it onto a page. All right, I'll just forward you to the email. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we're going to adjourn this meeting. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Sure. I have one. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, everyone All have right. a good night. Thank you. Yep. Okay.